Puss in Boots. There was a miller whose only inheritance to his three sons was his mill, his donkey, and his cat. The division was soon made. They hired neither a clerk nor an attorney, for they would have eaten up all the poor patrimony. The eldest took the mill, the second the donkey, and the youngest the cat. The poor young fellow was quite comfortless for having received so little. My brothers, he said, may make a handsome living by joining their shares together. But for my part, after I have eaten up my cat and made myself a muff from his skin, I must then die of hunger. The cat, who heard all this, said to him with a grave and serious air, Do not be so concerned, my good master. If you will but give me a bag and have a pair of boots made for me that I may scamper through the dirt and the brambles, then you shall see that you are not so poorly off with me as you imagine. After receiving what he had asked for, the cat pulled on the boots and slung the bag about his neck. He went to a place where there was a great abundance of rabbits. He put his greens into his bag, then stretched himself out as if he were dead. A foolish rabbit jumped into his bag and the master cat immediately closed the strings. Proud of his prey, he went with it to the palace and asked to speak with his majesty. He was shown upstairs into the king's apartment and making a low bow said to him, Sir, I have brought you a rabbit from my noble lord, Marquis de Carabas. Tell your master that I am very pleased with his gift, said the king. One day, when he knew that the king would be driving along the riverside with his daughter, he said to his master, If you will follow my advice, your fortune is made. You just must bathe yourself in the river. The master did what the cat advised him to. While he was bathing, the king passed by, and the cat began to cry out, Help! My Marquis de Carabas is going to be drowned! At this noise, the king put his head out the coach window and found it was the cat who had brought him the rabbit. He commanded his guards to run immediately and assist. While they were drawing in the poor lord, the cat told the king that while his master was bathing, some rogues had stolen his clothes. In truth, the cunning cat had hidden the clothes under a large stone. The king commanded the officers to fetch one of his best suits for the de Carabas and ask the lord to join them on their drive. At that time, the cat ran on ahead. Meeting some countrymen who were mowing a meadow, he said to them, My good fellows, if you do not tell the king that the meadow belongs to my lord Marquis de Carabas, you shall be chopped up like mincemeat. The king did not fail to ask the mowers whose meadow it was that they were mowing. It, it belongs, belongs to, to my lord Marquis of Carabas. Carabas. They answered all together, for the cat's threats had frightened them. You see, sir, said the Marquis, this is a meadow which never fails to yield a plentiful harvest every year. The master cat came at last to a stately castle, the lord of which was an ogre, the richest that had ever been known. The cat had known who this ogre was and what he could do, asked to speak with him, saying he could not pass his castle without having the honor of paying his respects to him. The ogre received him as civilly as an ogre could do. I have heard, said the cat, that you are able to change yourself into any kind of creature. You can transform yourself into a lion, an elephant, or the like. That is true, answered the ogre. And to convince you, I shall now become a lion. The cat was so terrified that he leaped onto the roof. However, the ogre resumed his natural form and the cat came down. I have further been told, said the cat, that you can also transform yourself into a rat or a mouse. 
but <laughs> I could scarcely believe that. I think that, that would be quite impossible. Impossible, cried the ogre. You shall see. He immediately changed himself into a mouse and began to run about the floor. As soon as the cat saw this, he fell upon him and ate him up. Meanwhile, the king, who saw this fine castle of the ogres as he passed, decided to go inside. The cat, who heard the noise of his majesty's coach, ran out and said to the king, Your majesty is welcome to the castle of my lord Marquis de Carabas! What? My lord Marquis? cried the king. Does this castle also belong to you? Let us go inside, if you don't mind. The Marquis gave his hand to the princess and followed the king. They passed into the spacious hall where they found a magnificent feast. His Majesty was perfectly charmed with the good qualities of Lord Marquis de Carabas, as was his daughter, who had fallen violently in love with him. It will be your own fault, my Lord Marquis, if you do not become my son-in-law, said the king. The Marquis de Carabas, making several low bows, accepted the honor which His Majesty conferred upon him, and forthwith, that very same day, married the princess. The cat became a great lord, and never again ran after mice, except for entertainment.